Hi everyone! Last week stock markets were grieved by the risk of sentiment. This week began with losses with US stock indices dropping lower. Judging by the current market situation, the prospects are rather grim. The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, which occurred at the end of last week, continues to exert pressure on equities. Investors fear a domino reaction. However, they also managed to find a positive sign in Silicon Valley Bank's demise. Apart from concerns about the state of the financial system, speculation assumes that this event may force the Fed to switch to a less aggressive stance. Goldman Sachs expects a pause in the tightening cycle. More than 70% of traders are now betting on a 25 basis point rate increase next week. However, everything may change as the inflation report is ahead. Watch this video review till the end and find out more curious details. Please leave your comments down below. Let's start! Jerome Powell's hawkish comments made last week are no longer relevant. Now the financial situation and possible future risks are in the limelight. The US authorities have made encouraging statements regarding the national financial system. The Department of Treasury said that all depositors of Silicon Valley banks would have access to their money. The Fed unveiled a new program to ensure banks can meet the needs of all their depositors following increasing changes of bank runs. The bank term funding program will offer loans with maturities of up to a year. Nevertheless, investors expect more woes in the future. U.S. stock indices remained volatile on Monday. The Dow Jones and S&P traded near the zero level after falling by almost 200 points and 1.1% respectively in early trading. The Nasdaq gained about 0.2% after declining by 0.5%. The banking sector is now in dire straits. Wells Fargo, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan Chase shares decreased significantly. At the same time, First Republic Bank stock sank by more than 74%. Tech and safe haven stocks were in the black. This week, traders will be focused on the banking sector and how the situation with Silicon Valley Bank is unfolding. They will also assess possible risk and their impact on the economy and the Fed's monetary policy. Nevertheless, NFP data released on Friday gave another reason for the Fed to stick to monetary tightening. However, the report was rather mixed. The unemployment rate rose more than expected. Wages growth turned out to be worse than forecasts. Thus, speculators hope to get more clues from inflation data, which is on top on Tuesday. What is more, traders are also waiting for revised figures on retail sales and the producer price index. The Dow Jones dipped by 4.5% of the week, uh, logging their worst weekly performance since September. Further decline looks possible, however, its downside potential is somewhat limited. The U.S. government calmed uh, markets with promises of support for the banking sector. Everything will depend on the further development of events. Now the situation is even more confusing and unpredictable. Analysts have polarized opinions on whether the Fed will raise the rate by 50 or 25 basis points in March. Given Silicon Valley's Valley Bank collapse, futures contract now imply a 4.7% peak rated by May. Last Wednesday, analysts assumed that this would happen no earlier than September and the key rate would reach 5.6%. The situation is changing rapidly. This week and next one could also bring lots of surprises. Therefore, traders should be extremely cautious, promptly reacting to any changes. A wave of panic has already rippled Wall Street. 
traders were getting rid of shakes flocking back to the bond market. Treasuries had been declining for several consecutive sessions. The yield of two-year government bonds dropped below 4% for the first time since early October 2022. Bloomberg noted that it was the steepest three-day decline by about 100 basis points since Black Monday in 1987. The S&P 500 slid below the pivot level of 4,000. This is a bad sign. Last week it lost almost 5%. The index returned to the support area of 3,930-3,880. The technical outlook suggests a short-term rebound. If the index grows above the 4,090 level, it may hit 4,200 and 4,320, the high of August last year. This scenario looks too optimistic. Inflation data and the Fed meeting are ahead. Analysts struggle to foresee the outcome of the meeting. It means that there could be a new surge in volatility. Bulls needs to push the price above 3,930-3,880. This is a downtrend line from last year and a correction from October. If the index settles above this level, it will avoid a deep decline. Yet, in the medium term, the bearish trend in the stock market looks more likely. The S&P could decrease to 3,700 in two or three weeks. The heavy tech Nasdaq 100 shed 5.1% last week. If it tumbles below the current levels, it will signal a further pullback. A dive to 10,700 will make investors even more anxious. However, they are now trying to predict what to expect from the stock market. The collapse of one of the largest banks was a kind of shake-up for investors who were mainly focused on the Fed's key rate. Now they are estimating other risks as well. However, they have different points of view regarding the financial system. Some believe that the dominance of the U.S. stock market cannot last forever, so now we are witnessing its decline. Others consider the black swan that appeared at the end of the week to be a short-term drawback. They point to the fact that the U.S. economy is expanding rapidly after the coronavirus crisis. Inflation is also dropping, albeit at a slow pace. The U.S. government is now in control of the economic situation. It has learned the lessons of the 2008 crisis. It means that the Fed could start easing monetary policy in the near future. There will be no financial Armageddon. There are just loud words. As you are well aware, bad news gets more attention and leads to more revenue. Perhaps such a steep decrease happened as traders were also expecting positive news. Many banks, stock indices and funds saw big losses following the bankruptcy of Silicon Valley Bank. Shares of regional U.S. banks fell sharply on Monday due to sharp losses of First Republic Bank. The news about the new funding program soothed markets but could not dispel fears of new bankruptcies. San Francisco-based First Republic Bank has been able to meet withdrawal demands with the help of additional funding from J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. However, it did not help the bank. Its shares were on a roller coaster ride. Trading stopped several times as the stock fell by 67% to $28 apiece. Shares of other regional banks also sank, shedding approximately 16 and 29%. Traders are now shifting attention to small banks with specialized lending. They are looking for the next bank exposed to interest rates and specific credit risks. First Republic Bank, which has considerable experience in the coastal real estate markets, seems to be next on the list. That is all for now. Hit the subscribe button and keep close tabs on market developments. See you!